Hey, what's going on guys? I hope you all are doing well today. Elliot here, welcome back to the Fragrance Well. <sighs> I guess it's time to finally go ahead and do a video about this. We're gonna talk about compliments today because I know you guys like compliments. Doesn't matter who you're talking to, compliments is always going to be something that is going to be a top discussed topic in FragCom. So, hey, let's go ahead and talk about some today. Couple of uh, caveats when it comes to compliments. Number one, your presentation is going to greatly affect how likely you are to get compliments when you are out amongst the public. Number two, you are more than likely going to get compliments from people who already know you or you have at least been acquainted with. And number three, the more frequently you wear a fragrance, the higher the chance of getting compliments from that fragrance because you wear it more often. Me personally, I pretty much wear a different fragrance every day, so I can't really put fragrance compliments to the test, if you will. Because if, for me, in my opinion, if you really want to see if a fragrance is a compliment getter, you pretty much got to wear it for like two weeks straight and go out into public and interact with people to see if they give you a compliment on the fragrance or not. With all that being said, I've got 12 fragrances here that I have gotten a compliment on when wearing them before. Uh, what I like about this list is not all of the fragrances are fragrances you would necessarily expect to get a compliment. Some of these are going to be obvious, but others might actually surprise you. Let's get into it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get it started. So let's get probably the most obvious one out of the way. This is Dior Sauvage. I have the Eau de Parfum. I would consider the Eau de Toilette as well in terms of ones that are probably being worn the most and therefore getting the most compliments. I mean, if you spent any time with this fragrance, if you've worn it over any certain period of time, you know it's a compliment getter. The fragrance was designed to get positive attention. Kind of a shower gel kind of fragrance. It's fresh, it's spicy, it's an Ambroxan bomb. It's one that you really shouldn't be surprised about if you've ever watched kind of a generic compliment getter fragrance list. This one will get compliments. <laughs> people are sick of hearing about it. Some people think it's overrated. Hey, whatever, it's irrelevant. The thing will get you compliments. That is tried and true because it's been worn so much. So once again, Dior Sauvage. All right, and another one from the house of Dior. This is Dior Homme 2020. Dior Homme 2020. While this one is somewhat newer on the block, it is pretty much well known now within the community that this one gets compliments. It is fresh has a touch of spiciness to it, and it is also quite woody. What I think gives this one the attention-grabbing nature that it has is that freshness and that modern, clean, blonde woods, if you will, the woodiness that it has, along with a prominent note of musk in the base of the fragrance. I think that gives it a very alluring quality. This fragrance also has a very nice sillage, so you can really pick it up nicely in the air. Regardless of how people felt about it uh, being such a departure from the original Dior Ohm Iris line, the fact of the matter is this one does work, very versatile, very good, very well done, and man, it will get you some good positive attention if you wear it frequently. Dior Ohm 2020. Okay, so this one is unofficially known as the starter Iris fragrance within the community. This is Prada Loam. Prada Loam. Known for being a very fresh and clean, soapy kind of iris fragrance. Not overly makeup-y or lipsticky or creamy, just fresh and clean. Smells like a really high class, high quality hand soap, if you will. That's how I like to describe it, at least. Now, if you haven't gotten your nose on this or you've gotten your nose on it recently, you might not really think of it as a compliment getter, but guess what? Those who know, know. People that have worn this for any amount of time and have, you know, some experience with it can tell you that this can definitely draw you positive attention. This is the only fragrance that I've ever worn where someone actually turned around from where they were going and chased me down to give me a compliment on this fragrance. That fresh, airy, soapy cleanliness, it just smells so pleasant in the air. Now I will say, I do think you have to be presenting yourself a certain way for this to really pull in the compliment. If you're kind of looking all raggedy and you're smelling like this, I don't think it's really gonna matter. Someone might say, well, that smells nice, but boy, he doesn't look like he's well put together. So again, appearance plays a big role in whether or not a stranger is going to approach you and give you a compliment on what you're wearing. So once again, this is Prada Loam. All right, so also coming from the house of Prada, the most directly known flanker from Prada Loam, this is Prada Loam Intense. Prada Loam Intense, basically the 
cooler weather, nighttime version of Prada Loam. More fun, more sexy, if you will. Still features that fresh, clean, soapy kind of iris. Not overly thick, but this one has a lot of tonka bean and also some leathery accords to deepen it up a little bit. With that added sweetness while also kind of retaining that fresh cleanliness, this naturally would get more compliments, you would think, compared to Prada Loam if that one doesn't come off to you as a compliment getter. This fragrance is discontinued, but you can still find it every now and then. But that being said, I cannot deny that this is a great compliment getter, has gotten me compliments before, and it's also just a great, great fragrance. Also, when I say discontinued, I mean discontinued in the United States. Apparently, it's not discontinued everywhere else, which is a shame, but hey, it is what it is. Once again, Prada Loam Intense. All right, so we're gonna move on to the house of Mason Francis Kirk John. This is Grand Soir. Mason Francis Kirk John Grand Soir. This right here is a sweet, rich, syrupy, resinous, amber, benzoin, and vanilla bomb. Touch of smokiness to it. There's some labdanum in here as well, but that's pretty much all it is. This is a warm and cozy and inviting fragrance. That sweetness and that warmth that this fragrance gives off is what I think gives it that alluring quality and gives it the potential to get compliments. This is one of those ones though I think you would have to wear frequently to really see if it'll be a compliment getter for you. I wore this one time when I was going to work. I was in a uh, part of a hospital and there must've been like six or seven nurses around and all of them just kind of burst out and said, what is that? It smells amazing. And I was like, well, it must be me because I'm the newest thing to walk in there. Only three sprays and they could smell it from like 15 feet away. So I was pretty impressed. I'm like, that's some pretty good sillage. Of course, this fragrance is for known for having really nice sillage and not being one that you have to spray, you know, 15 times to get it to fill up you know, the airspace around you. So really good fragrance from House of MMFK. Love that warming quality that it has. Once again, this is Grand Soir. All right, and since we're talking about the house of Mason Francis Kirk John, let's get the obvious one out of the way, shall we? This is Baccarat Rouge 540. Particularly the X-Trade. I just think the X-Trade's better, but obviously the original one will work as well, the Eau de Parfum. Baccarat Rouge 540. Has that cotton candy kind of vibe to it. This one in particular has that bitter almond and it has the saffron, and it's just known for being something that is interesting and different that captures people's attention. This one also has that musk in the dry down of it. So, hey, keep in mind musk guys, and you'll see later on with other fragrances in this list, musk gets attention. There's not much else that needs to be said about it. It's BR540. We know it gets attention. That's why it's so freaking popular. So once again, BR540 extract to parfum from the house of Mason Francis Kirk John. All right, guys. So the next one's coming from the house from the Shane, and this is one I was even surprised to get a compliment from. This is Sultan Vetiver. Nishane's Sultan Vetiver. Uh, if you know anything about this fragrance, it's basically trying to demonstrate all of the awesome qualities that Vetiver can give in a fragrance. And this one here is royalty in my opinion. Has some spiciness to it, has some cleanliness, very nice florals, got some absinthe to give it a brisk, brightness to it, and just every type of vetiver you can think of. Grassy, uh, green, woody, mossy, love this scent. Yeah, I was wearing it to work one day and someone gave me a compliment on it. I was like, hey, thank you. And number two, I'm like, wow, Sultan Vetiver got me a compliment? What? This furthermore proves that point that guys, any fragrance actually has the potential to get compliments. Some just have more potential than others. So don't go running and buying this thinking it's just gonna get you a million compliments. Trust me, this is not that type of fragrance that's meant to be a compliment magnet. And moreover, to the wearer, you need to really, really like vetiver. But I personally do, and I'm sharing this fragrance that got me compliments because it's something that's completely different from what you typically expect. Once again, Nishane's Sultan Vetiver. All right, and moving on, the next one's coming from the house of Orto Parisi. This is Bergamask. Orto Parisi Bergamask. Now, this fragrance, along with the majority of fragrances from this house, are going to be ones you definitely want to sample first. These fragrances are very forward, very in your face, very strong, and very dense. This one here is featuring a prominent note of heavy citrus, primarily bergamot. There's some other stuff in there as well. Uh, the company does not list the notes. There's certainly some florals in here. There might be a little bit of tonka bean and some amber to give it a touch of sweetness, but not a whole lot. But there is a very, very heavy dose 
a very dense and rich, almost animalic musk. And with that bright citrus and the combination of that dense musk, this is what makes this a compliment getter. I will say though, this one only works if you are presenting yourself as, in my opinion, a man that has his stuff together. If you don't come across that way, I don't think it's gonna have the same effect because frankly, that's what this reminds me of, a very clean man that has his stuff together and even got a little bit of hair on his chest. Check it out if you haven't already. Definitely get a sample of it first. Once again, Orto Parisi's Burger Mask. Okay guys, so the next one's coming from the House of Parfums de Marley. You probably know which one it is. It's Layton. Layton from the House of Parfums de Marley, definitely known in the community as a compliment getter. So this fragrance here, if you don't already know, it has freshness, it has sweetness, and it has spiciness. If all of these things are put together and blended well, you're gonna have a compliment capable fragrance. You're getting freshness from things like lavender and apple, you're getting spiciness from cardamom, you're getting sweetness from vanilla, all of that will combine to just make a fragrance that can grab attention, especially in the cooler weather. This is more of a cooler weather fragrance, but it can kind of be worn year around. Just adjust the sprays as necessary. That's all that really needs to be said about it. It is definitely a compliment capable fragrance. Once again, from the House of Parfums de Marley, this is Layton. All right, guys, so the next one's coming from the House of Tom Ford. This is Beau Du Jour. You were probably thinking I was gonna say ombre leather. Well, we're gonna talk about Beau Du Jour today. So this one here, aromatic fougere done in a modern way. Lots of lavender in the opening, but on the dry down, you get this great combination of amber and patchouli, giving you kind of a smooth sweetness with a little bit of earthiness to it. It just smells so freaking good and definitely has the potential to get you compliments. If you've heard me talk about this one at all, you know it's one of my favorite office scents, but this one also can play into being an after work scent where if you're going out and just kind of hanging out with people, maybe hitting up a bar, hitting up a restaurant, this one can still work. This one I definitely don't think is for everybody, but if you do like a scent profile like this, it is gonna be fun to wear because I love wearing this, I love the way it smells, and like I said, has the potential to get you compliments because it's so well done. Once again, Tom Ford, Beau Du Jour. All right, next up's coming from the house of Hermes. This is Terre de Hermes. Terre de Hermes, also a vetiver scent. Yeah, vetiver can get you compliments. <laughs> you know, it's not the uh, most attractive thing for compliments. It's not something that's guaranteed by any aspect. Then again, nothing is guaranteed, but some people like it. The briskness, the orange, the dirty earthiness of this, but I think what really gives this the compliment potential is the classy nature of it. So, again, this one needs to be presented a certain way to give you the potential to get compliments. If you're just kind of dressed in whatever that doesn't really match with what this scent profile is giving off, you're probably less likely to get compliments, in my opinion. Just like this one can, in some ways, be a love it or hate it fragrance, it's kind of the same way with compliments. You know, you might get one, you might not, you just don't know. You just kind of have to wear it and, and see what happens, you know? This is one you definitely need to put through the test to see if it's one that'll get you compliments. But I still think it's a great fragrance. Once again, this is Hermes Terre de Hermes, the Eau de Toilette. All right, guys, we're on to the last fragrance. So this fragrance here is the pioneer of a line that is known to be a compliment getter. From the house of Guerlain, this is Lome Ideal. Guerlain Lome Ideal. I mean, if a fragrance started out and spawned who knows how many flankers at this point, I've lost track. I mean, you know it was good. And this one definitely has the potential to get compliments. Has that creamy almond in it, a little bit of spice, some woodiness, some a good amount of sweetness to it, giving kind of a gourmand kind of edge to it. It's known to get compliments, and it spawned plenty of flankers that do just the same. The original Eau de Toilette doesn't get talked about as much as the flankers do, and with good reason. Those are obviously meant to be like improvements. They're richer. This one kind of has a fresh woodiness to it that is not so present in many of the flankers. But all that being said, this one still gets the job done. This is probably at this point the easiest one to find in the United States, and it's still definitely a fragrance that gives you the potential to get compliments, so don't be afraid to check it out even if it is the original one. And oftentimes the original is not considered the best in a line, but don't sleep on it. Once again, this is Guerlain Lome Ideal, the original Eau de Toilette. 
All right, guys, that's the entire list. That was 12 fragrances that I have received a compliment on when I have worn them before. Uh, it's not all the fragrances I've gotten compliments on in my cabinet. It's just a list I compiled that features some of the obvious ones and also has a couple of wild cards in there. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed the content, feel free to share it with somebody that you think might also enjoy it. Remember to be well and smell well, and I will see you in the next episode of The Fragrance Well. Have a good one.